These vaults tell a story about a beautiful friendship that started between uh, Dr. Caligosto Loboto, or Lobato, as he's called, and the lungfish named Linda. Mm. It's another love story in the game. You sound sp- suspicious. No, no, no. This is the this is the one of the strongest buddy stories in history. Yeah, I <laughs> think so. <laughs> this is, and it's very. It's based not just on love, uh, but on science, because you can see in its first picture. The lungfish is living underground in a uh, uh, bubble of mucus. That's I, I know you, you can't. I don't know if you can tell from the drawing, but that's mucus. Because I looked that up when we started the game of how lungfish live, and they create these little mucus bubbles, and they live in dried out lake beds. And so here he is, like a fun science fact for the kids. It's enriching. Today, that's super enriching. They would call that enriching content. Yeah. So he's got a tiny television set, and he's just right. uh, kind of zoning out. Which was totally... Um, or she. Which was how it was, right? I mean, in the science books, they had little television sets in their mucus. Is that... Oh, well, I mean, just some... Uh, the, the art. I can't <laughs> speak for the art being scientifically <laughs> accurate, but... Yeah, so it took a few liberties. Is that, is that the same t- uh, TV set that uh, she used as bait later in her angler? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. Probably because that, like, I mean, that looks like the same size relative to her bigger body. Because she gets a little bigger. Spoilers. And then she's uh, scooped up in a net by Lobato, uh, who you can recognize by his fancy spats. Why does Lobato have spats? <laughs> Is that what you call those? Uh, those, like, stirrup pants? I guess those are stirrup. Yeah. He's got stirrup pants. Why does he wear stirrup pants? I think because uh, real evil doctors are super into those. Because they hate when their le- their pants ride up their calves. Yeah, they yeah <laughs> yeah they they don't want their their pants to get into all their experiments and stuff. Like most people are concerned about keeping their pants up, but this guy is concerned about keeping his pants down. Like they will go no higher than this. <laughs> right. Well, dude, he's he doesn't want to track and he doesn't want to track any of these this mud and junk into his. Well, how does Lab. that? How does that help with the? How do the pants help with that? Well, because it tucks, it, it covers the. Well, it doesn't get on the pant cuffs. Okay, I think there's room in this app. We could talk about this for like an hour. Lobato brings the oh the poor lungfish is up in some experimental goldfish bowl, which he doesn't need because uh, they can breathe in air. Did you know that? Another science fact. Oh, really? Holy yeah. crap. Well, you know what? I don't think this is really filled with water, though. Uh, it might just, just be a bowl. Ball. That would make sense, because he's got all those electrodes in him, and Lobato's and his shower cap, and his tiny, tiny metal claw. Yep. Little, me- little metal claw. Longfish doesn't look that bummed. He just is like, uh... You promise this isn't going to hurt? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said it's not going to hurt. He's, I trust you, Caligosto. Yeah, do what you... Okay, you think this is going to give me a nice little yeah. do? Hairdo? And the coach, though, is really uh, excited by this. He's like, yeah, <laughs> in the background. And he's got, like, one eye. Does he have a monocle? Yeah, that's weird, dude. Does he have... I can't remember if he had... I think he does. I think he has a monocle. Kind of like uh, like uh, like Colonel Clink in Hogan's Heroes. He a, uh... oh, yeah, he's just... oh, he's super Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, totally. Everything sure. we do is based on Hogan's Heroes. Oh, but the experiment looks like it went awry, or else was more successful than... Look up. Lobato's totally psyched, and Oleander can't believe it. He's got the little lines of disbelief coming off his forehead. Dong! Uh-huh. I'm not sure what he's expecting. He's like... Did he actually did he pump a bunch of air into the lungfish? How did he make him so big? With electricity? Just like electricity made him big? Well, dude, I think it like pumped um, musc- muscle spasm juice oh, in that... there. You know, oh, it's it like that. Him... It's kind of like little bits of uh, stimulation adrenaline. of muscles... And adrenaline. And adrenaline. Made him big and, and somehow stapled ster- a bunch of metal, uh, sheet metal onto his head. That's Yeah, that's a classic uh, Frankenstein design. I don't think Frankenstein had sheet metal on his head, though, did he? Oh, he doesn't? Like, stapled to the outside like that? Well, <laughs> I'm sure there's, there's been other <laughs> we, Frankenstein monsters. We took monsters. it a little bit farther than Frankenstein. <laughs> I mean, he had bolts. I guess that's where you had things. But I think, I think you know, there's certain parts where you're like, oh, you know, I gotta put some, do some extra junk here and here. Yeah. So you put a metal plate yeah. over it. Totally. It's just easier. It's just easier than stitching. And a cool bracelet. She's got like a little cool metal bracelet. 
Okay, so this experiment though, like, what exactly was he trying to? Do? Was he just trying to make him a more badass monster I... and um, a fish and like a more enhanced fish, like a smarter fish? I I think the coach really wanted to create a, a cover for his kidnapping of the of the kids, like a story that uh, he could blame it on. Like, oh, uh, there was a monster. He's trying to create a lake monster. You know, you know, every summer camp has a story about a, a some sort of like hatchet Annie or some sort of scary thing that lurks in the woods. Oh yeah, right, right. We had our lake monster that came out and ate kids. So he actually made a real one that was under his control that he could actually use use to, to ferry kids across the lake to the his secret hideout. See. Okay, so he wanted he did want it to be grotesque. He just wasn't prepared how grotesque it was actually. Gonna he be. just yeah, he probably thought Lobato was a nut job and was just faking it. And then uh, it worked beyond his wildest uh, dreams, and here we see Lobato and the coach sending him off on his first mission, and they're full of instructions here, because Lobato's holding up a brain, so he's like, go get a brain, and the coach is holding up pictures of children, it's like, go get the brains from children, they're being very explicit, but I don't think Linda's paying attention, she's just like, oh, and just wandering off, just don't get my eyes wet, as long as my eyes don't get out of the water, I'm fine. <laughs> He's like, wait, don't you want to take these photos with you? No. These are the exact kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he took our direction very well. I have a good memory now. You pumped an amazing memory into me. I, I can remember <laughs> all things. But he didn't bring the uh, he didn't bring the jar either. There's a jar there for him to put he, the brains in. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't, well, he doesn't extract the brains. He just brings the whole kid back. That's right. Spits That's him out right. on the shore. That's right. That's and then right. goes back and gets another kid. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I realized we never really returned Linda to her original size. That's what we should have done in the game. Because it's kind of sad that she's all big forever. But, yeah. But maybe she, but maybe she, um, you know, discovers, like, good things about it, like, in her new life. She's like, ah, because she's kind of into certain aspects. She can get into restaurants easier. (laughs) Wait, she can? Well, yeah. She shows up. Seems like it'd be harder. Well, certain, certain restaurants, obviously. Ah, uh, right. Certain restaurants would. She just exception. gets. Let's just say she gets her way a lot more in general. Yeah. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. No, but I think all the kids like love horsing around with her and stuff now. Oh yeah, she's like the camp mascot now. She oh yeah, she probably has her own camp, <laughs> or her own class. Yeah, like a like a knitting or watching TV, or how to breathe air. Actually, her skills aren't that in demand, but how to, how fishing. She could teach fishing. Cause yeah, she's. How to set bait. This one is called Lungfishopolis. Under Siege. That was uh, exciting. Uh, we did that one. If you did, dude, friendship. This is inside the uh, lungfish's mind and how the lungfish named Linda sees... Uh, how the coach implanted a uh, a control mechanism into her mind, mm-hmm. right? So yep. you got that. It's true. Okay. So they're pretty. She inside her mind, uh, her thoughts and everything about her are represented by these little people, the lungfish citizens. Yeah, they're yeah. just happy little simple creatures playing "Ring Around the Rosie," I think, in the corner. Yeah, "Ring and Around the Rosie." They're dancing with crabs, which was a um, was a Kevin Costner movie, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the Kevin Costner long fish right there. <laughs> to the less popular sequel to Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Dances with Crabs. <laughs> Dances with and crabs. then they're celebrating their special holiday where they give each other fried eggs on the end of sticks. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. And those guys. Everything's going good. They're sitting up top of the lower rock playing the waving game. I like to think one of them is trying to convince the other one to sit on his rock. Like, hey, come over. This is the cool rock. Come sit on my rock. And then the other one's like, no, no, no. This is the cool rock. Come over here. This, this is the better rock. And the middle guy's the one, like, the one uh, middle guy's pretty yeah. sure he's, he's not on the cool rock. Yeah, he's having second thoughts and third thoughts about his <laughs> his rock. The guy in the foreground and the, the, see the guy in the foreground, and the guy in the middle ground. They're both super pumped on that uh, fried egg too. Yeah, yeah. Who wouldn't be? Yeah. Uh, and then who shows up but Coach Amra? Coach Amra. I don't know why the coach chooses the uh, the guise of a rubber-suited Japanese monster movie villain, but um, I think he just liked Ultraman. He liked watching that show as a kid. So yeah. he, chose, he chose that guy to come. So you can tell that it worked here because you see all the lungfish citizens 
bowing. Enchanted. And, uh, They're enchanted. Oh, enchanted. you're on this. Okay, you jump to the other side so fast. Yeah, it's fast. You don't even yeah. hang out on this side at all. No, well, you want to look at that previous one? No. <laughs> the <not> previous. <laughs> I feel like. There's, uh, not, there's, he's, there's guys he's holding pointing. up his hand saying, just hold on, no questions until the end of my speech, please. And everybody else. You can see the guy in the foreground. He's like raising his hand like, um, um. <laughs> What are the health benefits of this big plant? And like, nah, uh, uh, um, I will explain all that after my big speech. After my big speech. I, and one by one, come up and give me five. <laughs> That's noble, amazing. noble Kochamra. But then in the next slide, hint, hint, he puts them all to work. And you see uh, lungfish citizens of all sizes and shapes have to get to work. These guys have to pull a big block down the street. Mm -hmm. And then I think these other guys with the hats on are going to squish them with hammers. That seems mean. Well, they're just picking them up, putting it in places. You think so? They're helping the little guys, or are they actually just composited in there? So they're not meant to be different sizes. Well, it's a composite, bro. Good, good, good it. artwork, bro. Good artwork, well, but that is what it is. Yeah. And I, and but you know what? The but the um, older coach really is that size, so I don't know. It's really confusing, probably. In I fact, don't think the, in fact, those is guys. Really, have, an art word. I think I just stole that from the last time we tried to record this commentary from mm -hmm. you, and right. now I'm using it. Do you see how that happened? Mm -hmm. I do. You nailed it. You nailed it. So I mean, I I think this was super inspired by um by the Great Pyramids, the building of the Great Pyramids, <laughs> slash the skyscraper boom in New York City. Yep. What years would the would that be? We all. Uh, the first one yeah. was. I tried wait. to incorporate a little history. A little history I think to every three thousand okay. three thousand BC was that the. Uh, Great That's pyramid. the first skyscraper boom in New York City? That was the skyscraper boom, uh, and the Great Pyramids were in like the early 1900s. The 30s, okay. Even though he's putting the work, everyone's pretty psyched. You can see on the last frame, it's a beautiful now utopia of neon and skyscrapers. Kind of Blade Runner-esque, if you ask me. Beautiful. Yeah. Blimps, blimps offered advertising a better life in the off-world colonies. Except for that one guy down there. <laughs> Who's mm -hmm. a fan of '80s metal? He's wearing a like rising star headband. Yeah. And he's saying he's tightening it up because he's so angry. He's pulling it tight, going, oh, "I will never serve you, Coach Hamra. Oh. Never. I hate neon so much. This is the tightest knot. No one will ever get this off my head." Because that's like the part of the lungfish's brain that's like, "Hey, I don't like this foreign intruder in my mind." Because like. When, some, when you're under hypnosis, there's a party that goes along with the program and a party that kind of goes like, wait a second. And they're battling it out for control of your mind. Right. But they're living in such an awesome city. I don't yeah, know. But, mm, they won't a really question about, uh, you know, is there such a thing as happy tyranny? Scott, that's kind of a discussion question for later. Yeah. You yeah. can stop this commentary right now and discuss that amongst yourselves and your classmates. Yeah, it sounds good. This is, cause this, this is used in, as a textbook, right, in classes? Yeah, and then start the projector again when you want to resume the show. Okay, go for it, everyone. You think they're still here? Um, I think a couple people might still be listening. I hope they paused it because I don't have anything else to say. Yeah, I think we're done with this one. Yeah.